In the set of all polynomials, P sub 2, find the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C, the standard basis, and then write T squared as a linear combination of the polynomials in basis B. So, the first thing that we want to do is find the change of coordinates matrix P from basis B to basis C. So we know that this is the matrix defined by the coordinates, the coordinate vectors of the vectors in basis B relative to basis C. And so looking at our given basis B here, we have three vectors. Say so there's vector B sub 1, and vector B sub 2, and vector B sub 3 defined by those polynomials. So the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C has column vectors defined as the coordinates of vector B sub 1 relative to C. The second column is the coordinates of vector B sub 2 relative to basis C. And the coordinates of vector B sub 3 relative to the standard basis C. And so this is what we are looking for. So to find these column vectors, we need to think about the three vectors in these basis B. So we have vector B sub 1 is defined as 1 minus 7 t squared. The second vector B sub 2 is defined by the polynomial minus 2 plus t plus 15 t squared. And last but not least, we have the vector B sub 3 defined by the polynomial 1 plus 6 t. And so we want to go ahead and convert these three linear equations these three linear combinations into or vector equations to their corresponding matrix equation. So we can rewrite this as the matrix, the change of coordinates matrix relative to the basis C, which has column vectors 1, T, T squared, multiplied by the column vector of coefficients. So that's 1, 0, negative 7. And the reason behind doing this is that we have the change of coordinates matrix relative to the basis C multiplied by the coordinates of vector B relative to the basis C. And that's the first column of the matrix we're looking for. Woohoo! So we can say that the coordinates of vector B sub 1 relative to the basis C is defined as the column vector 1, 0, negative 7. And we'll do this with the other two vectors here. So we have that we can rewrite this vector equation in its matrix equation form. We have the change of coordinates matrix P sub C multiplied by the column vector of coefficients, negative 2, 1, 15. And so the coordinates of vector B sub 2 relative to the standard basis C is defined by the column vector negative 2, 1, 15. And last but not least here, we have the matrix defined by the vector, the column vectors 1, t, t squared, multiplied by the column vector of coefficients 1, 6, 0. And so the coordinates of vector b sub 3 relative to the standard basis c is defined as 1, 6, 0. And so we're now going to use these three column vectors to define the change of coordinates matrix relative, or the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C. So therefore, the change of coordinates matrix from basis B to basis C is the 3 by 3 matrix 1, 0, negative 7, minus 2, 1, 15, and then 1, 6, 0. And so this is the first part of our final answer. And we're now going to use this to go ahead and write t squared as a linear combination of the polynomials in basis B. So here we go. And again, our job here is to write t squared as a linear combination of the vectors in basis B. 
and we'll keep in mind here that our basis B is defined by the polynomials 1 minus t squared. We have minus 2 plus t plus 15t squared. And then we had the third polynomial, 1 plus 6t. So the first thing that I'm going to do here is take this. We want to write t squared as a linear combination of these three vectors. So let's write t squared as a, a polynomial vector here. So we can say that vector p is equal to t squared, which is a coordinate mapping. And again, we can rewrite this as the product of the matrix, the change of coordinates matrix relative to basis c multiplied by the coordinates of vector p relative to basis c. So this would be the matrix with column vectors 1, t, t squared, multiplied by the column vector of coefficients 0, 0, 1. And again, this is the change of coordinates matrix p relative to the standard basis c, multiplied by the coordinates of vector p relative to the basis c, and so therefore we have the change, or excuse me, the coordinates of vector p relative to basis c, 0, 0, 1. So how can we use this to write t squared as a linear combination? So to do that, we need to think to ourselves, or we need to recall the change of basis equation. So... Let's recall that the change of coordinates matrix P from basis B to basis C multiplied by the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis B is equal to the coordinates of vector P relative to the standard basis C. So we can use this matrix equation to create an augmented matrix, which will then allow us to solve for the coordinates of vector p relative to our basis b, thus allowing us to write that linear combination. So here we go. We're going to row reduce the augmented matrix where we have the change of coordinates matrix from, from basis p, b to basis c, and we're augmenting this with the coordinates of vector p relative to basis c, and we want to row reduce this to row reduced echelon form. So we have 1, 0, negative 7, negative 2, 1, 15, 1, 6, 0. And we are augmenting this with the coordinates we just found, 0, 0, 1. And so here we go. We're going to use our first pivot to eliminate the entries below it. So we can do 7 times the first row plus the third row to get that new third row. And so this will be equivalent to the matrix 1, negative 2, 1, 0, 0, 1, 6, 0. And then we have 7 minus 7 is 0. Negative 14 plus 15 is 1. 7 plus 0 is 7. And then 0 plus 1 is 1. So our first column is all set, and we move to the second pivot position, which we use to eliminate the entries above and below it. So we can do 2 times the, oops, excuse me, so this should be positive 2 times the second row plus the first row to attain the new first row. And then we'll simply do minus the second row plus the third row to attain the new third row. And so this will produce the equivalent augmented matrix. So we have 1, 0, 12 plus 1 is 13, 0. The second row remains 0, 1, 6, 0. And the third row becomes 0, 0, 1, 1. And our second column is all set. We move to our third pivot position. 
and we use this to eliminate the entries above it. So we'll need to do minus 13 times the third row plus the first row, and we'll need to do minus 6 times the third row plus the second row. And so this produces the equivalent matrix 1, 0, 0, and then we have minus 13. We then have 0, 1, 0, minus 6, 0, 0, 1, 1. And so this lets us know that the coordinates of vector P relative to the basis B is equal to negative 13, negative 6, 1. And so these are going to be the coefficients of the linear combination of the polynomials in basis B. So we can say that therefore we can write t squared as negative 13 multiplied by the first vector in basis B. So that's multiplied by 1 minus t squared then this is plus the scalar multiple negative 6 multiplied by the second polynomial in our basis B. So that's multiplied by a minus 2 plus t plus 15t squared. And last but not least, this is plus 1. We really don't even need to write that 1 there, but that's plus 1 multiplied by that polynomial, 1 plus 6t. And you can leave your answer like this. There's nothing wrong with this. Or you could distribute to make sure. But again, we, you at least want to be sure to include this first part in your answer. right? What we should end up with is t squared equals t squared, which isn't much of a linear combination. Here we can see the coefficients to those vectors. Right, this is that vector, and if we think back to how we originally defined it, this is your vector b sub 1 from the basis b. Here is that vector b sub 2 from our basis b, and this is vector b sub 3 from that basis b.